Dubai, a city on the coast of the Persian Gulf, is the most important financial and commercial center in the Middle East. Thanks to phenomenally low fees, it's the world's third biggest center for re-exportation of goods, coming after only Hong Kong and Singapore. But in terms of skyscrapers and other wonders of architecture, it's vastly superior to them. Look how beautiful it is. Splendid. Let's not waste any time and head straight to the renowned local markets. As always, I'll be looking for and showing you goods that fully reflect the essence of Dubai. In other words, goods that are edible and non-edible symbols of this place. An interesting factoid, locally they produce only oil, dates, and fish. They used to have pearls too, but not anymore. They hunted them all down. They are as many markets in Dubai as pasta varieties in Italy. And just like Italian pasta, there are markets to cater to every taste and wallet size. In the historical part of Dubai, next to the old district of Bastakia Quarter, there is a textile market. Here it is. As the name implies, you can buy textiles and everything related to them here. Tourists come here for all sorts of souvenirs and knitwear at bargain prices, while locals just love to dress up. So for obvious reasons, this market is a popular place. Welcome, my friend. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Also great. Would you like to try on an Arabic robe? Yes, I'd love to. This was going to happen sooner or later. Now they're just going to make a chic out of me. Just watch. I have a robe in exactly your size here. It looks like your favorite thing to do is to put Arabic robes on foreign tourists. Yes. Is it too small? No, it's okay. The, the vendor guessed right. Could you tell me a little bit about this clothing? In Arabic, this is called a kandura, but not only locals who buy them, Europeans buy them too to go to a costume party, for example. Let me bring you something else too. Okay, mister, dress me up. Of course, a scarf. You can't go without one. You can fold it like this in a triangle. This is called a gutra. Is that what you call the way it's folded? Yes, that's what it's called in Arabic. I don't remember what you call it in English. See, that's how they wear it here. And who exactly wears these? Mostly young men. Are you sure I look young? Maybe 20 years ago I looked young. Look at yourself in the mirror and I'll give you an agal. An agal? Yes, I'll do it for you. Like this, yes? Yes. You mean the Arab men walk down the street all day. They get up in the morning at 6 a.m. The sun hasn't risen yet, and it's already 86 degrees out. They walk all day long while making sure that this beak is in the right place. Otherwise, people will laugh at you. Could you tell me a little secret? Do local guys wear underwear under their robes or just the robe? They wear a white t-shirt and short white boxers underneath, although some wear long pants. What can I tell you, my friends? It's perfect. Men will catch my drift when I say air circulates where necessary, and what should be ventilated is. The kandura is the traditional clothing for the male half of Dubai's population and costs 80 dirhams, or exactly $20. I won't try walking around in the Arabic robe just yet. As they say, your own shirt fits best. A few words about local topography. Just opposite the textile market is another Dubai market that's no less interesting or popular than the first. The two markets are separated by the picturesque Dubai Creek, meaning the easiest and fastest way to get from one to the other is by water. The most affordable way to get from the new part of the city to the old is in this type of simple wooden looking boat called an Abra. But this is not a simple boat at all, guys. The total travel time is a minute and a half and costs one dirham or 25 cents. And these 90 seconds are enough for me to tell you that while there are thousands of luxury cars in Dubai, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces, and other makes, moreover, you can buy a Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Rolls Royce on literally every corner. Well, they will. You might get one as change at a market, but you'll never be able to buy a boat such as this guy's because there are only 150 of them in the whole city and they are designated national treasures, making it all the more pleasant to travel in one. And here's my stop.
When you're just a few dozen yards from the pier, the aroma of cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, and nutmeg starts to prick at your nose. And this means that you're in the right place, the place of taste and smells. It's called the Spice Souk, or the Spice and Herbs Market. Despite the fact that Dubai is a super modern city, the Spice Market is a classical oriental bazaar. And if a Bedouin who lived here 500 years ago would show up in a time machine, he wouldn't be confused at all. Here, everything is as it used to be. Yusuf, I'm looking for various symbols of Dubai, edible and otherwise. Dubai has a whole market of spices. Can I say the spices are one of the local symbols? Yes, we have a lot of different spices here. Here, for example, look, this is saffron. Saffron? Yes, Iranian saffron is a very useful and tasty spice and very expensive too. Look, this is the flower saffron is made of. This isn't a real flower, is it? Of course not. This is a plastic replica of the crocus flower. I show it to customers and tell them in order to get two pounds of saffron, you have to collect three to 4,000 fresh flowers. And it's all done by hand and takes a very long time. And that's why it's so expensive. As far as I know, there are many varieties of saffron here, aren't there? Yes, we have saffron of different qualities and different cost. The best quality saffron costs 15 dirhams for one third of an ounce. Iranian saffron costs 15 dirhams or $3.75 for one third of an ounce. And here I see another interesting spice. This is vanilla, isn't it? Yes, but it's not just vanilla. This is vanilla from Madagascar. In many countries, vanilla is often sold as a powder, but here it is in its natural form. You can open this pod and see there are beans inside. They can be added to coffee or tea for taste and aroma. Is it expensive? One third ounce costs three to four dirhams. Vanilla from Madagascar costs approximately 3.5 dirhams or 87 cents for one third of an ounce. If for some reason you couldn't find what you were looking for in Yusuf's shop, you'll most certainly find it in Muhammad's shop. Well, in any case, that's what Muhammad says. And here it is. My friend, I've never seen most of your goods before in my life. I have no idea what all of this is. For example, what's this? This is smoked lemon. Smoked lemon? Yes, for cooking fish. My friends, believe it or not, but this is smoked lemon. And it's not just smoked on the outside for beauty, it's smoked all the way through. Look, smoke gets into the lemon and everything is smoked here. The taste is pleasantly refreshes your mouth. The taste of lemon isn't gone, but some very delicate, gentle taste of smoking has been added to it. And where's it from? From Somalia, very good stuff. I definitely recommend it. This incense is very famous. This is frankincense, isn't it? Yes, it is. You're right. A very ancient incense. Where is it from? From Oman. You know, we usually use frankincense in churches. Yes, I know about that. For Christmas, for example. You can also eat frankincense. It's very good for your digestion. You can eat it? Yes. You can take a small piece, throw it in a bottle of water, leave it overnight, and shake it up in the morning. You'll end up with water infused with powder from the incense. Drink and you'll have no more stomach problems. Right, if you want to call something holy water, then this, my friends, is it. Water with frankincense in it. Two pounds of the world's best Omani frankincense is 90 dirhams, or $22.50. And this is Bakur, the best fragrance product you can buy in our market. The best quality, only for sheiks? Only for them. Well, thank God, finally. Smell that. Yes, the smell is fantastic. It smells like a sheik's palace. This is used in the best homes in Dubai and the most expensive local hotels too. How do you use it? Break it into pieces and then place it on that. Uh-huh, a small fragment of this incense is placed on red hot coal and your house smells like, 
Yes, you'll have a luxurious fragrance in your home. Guys, you won't confuse this aroma with anything else. It's very rich and powerful. It's made from oud resin from the agarwood tree that grows in Southeast Asia and India. Arab merchants brought it to the Middle East in the Middle Ages, and ever since, the scent of oud smoke has been the symbol of wealth and prosperity in these parts of the world. Thanks, friend. And how much does it cost? Only 45. Well, guys, I decided to buy the scent worthy of sheiks, and it's actually quite reasonably priced. I wouldn't buy myrrh or frankincense because then my house would smell like a church. Then it would be impossible to sin. And what kind of life would I have then? But this is an absolutely wonderful souvenir that I'm happy to bring back from Dubai. Bakur, a traditional fragrance for homes, costs 45 dirhams, or $11.25, or a 10-ounce jar. There's no lack of customers in the textile market or in Dubai's spice market, but still, when it comes to Dubai's markets, this is the one that first comes to mind, not those. As you may know, there's what's known as the Golden Ring in Russia. It's a popular tourist route that includes many ancient Russian cities and their gold dome churches. Dubai has its own Golden Ring. Here it is. Look at it, the record holder in the Guinness Book of World Records, weighing in at 126 pounds. It's not for sale, if you were wondering, but if it were, it would cost two and a half million dollars. I know what you want to ask, where's the largest piece of gold jewelry in the world located? Well, where else can it be if not in the largest gold market in the Middle East? That's where I'm going right now. Golden Souk, or Golden Market, is the place in Dubai that attracts 9 out of 10 tourists who arrive in this metropolis of luxury. And as for locals, they are also frequent guests. By the way, legend says that every indigenous resident of Dubai buys 30 pounds of gold annually. Some people buy it piece by piece throughout the year, while others buy all 30 pounds at once. I won't bet on whether that's true or not, but you must agree it sounds enchanting. One of our regular viewers, Roman, sorry, I've forgotten your last name, Roman, wrote to us, Alexander, when are you going to show something really expensive on your program? Roman, here you are, chain mail, made of pure gold. It weighs 30 pounds and costs $1 million. I'd say in order to wear something like that, you need to be a power lifter. Excuse me. A gold power lifter. I'm looking for a different... I'm looking for all sorts of goods that could be considered symbols of Dubai. And here there is a gold market. Does that mean that gold is one of the symbols of Dubai? The gold is one of the most important symbols. The thing is... Dubai is the world capital of gold. Buyers from around the world come here to purchase gold. So, yes, you could say that. What about the prices? The price depends. You can go into any gold shop in Dubai and you'll see the same screen. It always shows the current state set price of gold. I see that you have a screen here. What does it mean? You could say that. We have the most reasonable prices due to the fact that we don't have taxes. In comparison to European prices, it's much cheaper here. Would you say that you can find the best prices for gold in the world here? As you can see, I don't wear gold jewelry. I know nothing about gold. Can you explain everything about gold to me like you would explain it to your son if you wanted to make him an expert? When you look at a piece of gold jewelry, how much of the cost is for the raw material and how much of it is for the work a jeweler puts into it? First of all, in my shop, you can buy gold of any purity and any type of gold jewelry. Second, we have goods for every taste. There are items here for locals and also things that people from India, Europe, or Russia will like. Can you show me some specific examples? Yes, if, say, a buyer from India comes to me. Yes, imagine that I am a customer from India. No problem. Hello, my friend, how are you? My name is, what is the most popular Indian name? Your name is, say, Mr. Ramesh. Oh, Ramesh, perfect. So I'm an Indian billionaire, Mr. Ramesh. What do you have for me? 
I have a beautiful gold necklace for your spouse or girlfriend. Very interesting craftsmanship. How many carats? 22 carats. Whose design is this? This necklace was made in Dubai, but the design is Indian. The total weight of this necklace is 2.8 ounces. Let's do the math. Yes. As you can see on the screen, the gold price for this purity is currently 146.5 dirhams. How very convenient. Yes, it is. That's what I'm talking about. In my opinion, this is the most honest way to sell gold. You have the official rate for gold hanging over your head. Yes, there are the rates. Here we have a scale and here is a calculator. Everything is transparent and clear. 11,432 dirham is the net price of gold for this piece. And then we must add the price for the work put in. Where is the price for the craftsmanship higher, here or here? If you compare these two pieces of jewelry, this will be more expensive because this includes precious stones. And this one is cheaper. The work of the jeweler only cost 1,570 dirhams. And the total price? The total price is 13,000 dirhams. An Indian style necklace costs 13,000 dirhams or $3,250. Okay, so we've done India. Now let's imagine that I'm a famous Italian media mogul. My name is, let's say, Silvio, and I'm looking for a gift for my girlfriend. Then you might find this necklace interesting. 22 karat gold, very fine work. Do you like it? Yes, it's quite good. And if we talk about its weight, it's quite light, despite the fact that it looks massive. It weighs only 0.9 ounces. And how much does it cost? First, I'll calculate the net price of gold. 3,680 dirhams, and this is the price for the work. And the total price? The total price is 4,298 dirhams. The gold necklace for an Italian mogul costs 4,298 dirhams, or $1,074.50. Do you see the difference? Well, to finally wrap up the topic of gold, I'd like to bring this piece to your attention. It's a kilogram of gold. The price is about $70,000, and it's handmade. And what would a Russian man do if he bought his sweetheart such a trinket? Well, he loves her, and he has some money to spend, so he buys it. And then he'll take her to visit their friends so that everyone can see they have money and that he loves his wife. But what would an Arab man do? He'll buy the piece of jewelry, of course, and he'll give it to his beloved, but you won't see this kind of jewelry on local women. But that doesn't mean that they aren't wearing it. They are, of course. But it's traditional to wear a completely opaque garment called an abaya over such jewelry because no one besides her husband has the right to see the woman wearing such jewelry. This is all you need to know about the differences between the Eastern and Western frame of mind. Now, of course, I can walk around for a long time and pretend that I'm interested in all this gold jewelry, but to tell the truth, I didn't even wear gold in the 90s when it was highly popular in Russia. Plus, the women I know are only interested in gifts like smartphones, expensive cars, or cold hard cash. But even in the case of such a, to put it mildly, strange customer like me, the gold market of Dubai has something to offer, and I'm going to show it to you in a second. Could you tell me, please, how to properly invest in gold? You can invest your money in gold bars or gold coins, like these, for example. How much do they weigh? They weigh half an ounce each. 24 karat? Yes, it's 24 karat gold. And all the necessary state certificates are attached here. And how much does this coin cost? $738. And what is the benefit of purchasing such coins? This is a collector's edition, a limited edition. Only 10,000 coins were issued. They don't make these coins anymore, which means that when you acquire such a coin, you can be sure that its value will only increase in the future. I see you have gold bars here too. What's the difference between coins and bars? 
Gold coins are a long-term investment. If you want to make money fast, I would advise you buy gold bars. Why? Because in order to make a profit on collectible coins, you have to wait a few years. So if you want to make a quick profit, you should buy gold bars. Show me the smallest bar. Here's the smallest one, a bar weighing 1 28th of an ounce. 1 28th of an ounce, how much is it? $60 even. Well then, this I like. You see, when you buy gold jewelry, there are several additional factors involved in the deal. Design, purity. So you buy the piece of jewelry, you give it to your girlfriend, or you wear it yourself if you still follow the fashion of the 90s. But what if you go broke? It's impossible to sell it back for the same price because, because you know, gold jewelry loses 10% of its price immediately after you bought it and taken it out of the store. Look, I'm already a middle-aged man, you know? I've never liked wearing gold, and I've never learned to save money either. You should start now, all my friends say to me, and the manager sings the same tune. Start investing, Alexander. Now, I can't afford to buy 3.5 ounces, dear editors, but I have enough money to buy this little piece. This here costs $60, and it's a good excuse to start saving up already. It's high time. A 120-ounce gold bar costs $60 even. When evening falls in Dubai, the trade here, no, no, it doesn't stop. You didn't think so, my friends, did you? Markets in Dubai are open late into the night. Take, for example, the waterfront market, which is, by the way, the largest and most advanced food market in Dubai. Just a little while ago, on this very spot, was a bustling traditional market where, under the scorching sun, people sold high-quality, albeit often perishable, products. And you're left with the feeling that in the not-too-distant past, the first statesmen gathered for a meeting and told each other something along the lines of, friends, we've built the tallest building in the world. We've built the largest shopping center in the world, which houses the largest parking garage in the world and the largest indoor aquarium in the world. We have an all-season ski resort too, but we forgot about a market. And in very little time, as if by the wave of a magic wand, this palace of delicious, healthy food arose on this spot. I'll share an observation of mine. You shouldn't go to produce markets in the East alone, but with a sociable and lovely lady. And I have one with me today. Her name is Victoria Blinova. This isn't her first year living in Dubai, and it's not her first time at the market either. This is my friend. Hi, this is a TV crew. Do you mind if we film here? Your face is the color of this pomegranate. <laughs> Help yourself. This is for me? Of course it is. Come on, tell us about this pomegranate. It's from Yemen. Yemen? Yes, I also have Egyptian ones and pomegranates from India, but those are the best. So you have pomegranates from all over the world, but at the moment, the most delicious ones are from Yemen? Can we try it? Do you speak Arabic? Yes. Do vendors in the market treat you differently depending on whether you speak Arabic or not? Yes, yes. So they... Well, well, they're usually shocked because very few people speak Arabic. Wow, look how he... How easily he does that. You've probably seen that a million times on the internet, how to properly cut a pomegranate, because usually people cut off the top and start picking the seeds out with a spoon. Yes, 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 yes. But actually you should cut into sections like an orange. Wow. That's how it's done. It's so handy to walk around the market in Dubai with a beautiful girl. This is the first gift that I've been given. It's free? It is. Help yourself. Yeah, thanks. Do you have a glass of water? Because this is, well, an unbelievably sweet pomegranate. Pomegranates from Yemen cost five dirhams, or $1.25, for two pounds. For friends of beautiful ladies, they're free. So here we have a peeled coconut. Yes, it's peeled. A half-peeled coconut. This actually isn't the first time we've eaten coconuts. For example, I like the coconuts we had in Thailand. Really excellent. And in Malaysia, they have gorgeous coconuts. Where are these coconuts from? We need to ask because they are actually from different places, and it depends on where they were brought from. And I think it also depends on the season. Where is this from? 
from Omen? All of them? Which is the best? This one? Can I try it? Talk to him in Arabic. I know how much it costs. Usually five dirhams. How much is it? Seven dirhams. Ask how much it costs. Right now, right before your eyes, this grumpy vendor tribe... More or less. He thinks you're a tourist, but you're not. Oh, should we haggle, or is, is that not... Seven or five? I usually buy them for five. Is five okay? So we've agreed on five. That's it. One coconut from Oman costs five dirhams or a dollar twenty-five. Hello, and where are these dates from? From Saudi Arabia. And what's the difference between them? These are from Jordan. Oh, why is this one yellow and the other is golden? This is a fresh date. This one is fresh and this one is dried? How old is it? Two months. And the fresh one, how many days old? Five days. I don't know, maybe I'm uncultured, but this is the first time I've seen a fresh date. We've already filmed dates in Tunisia. Aha. Uh -huh. But my friends, with all due respect to citizens of Tunisia, I'm sorry, but your market is like a teenager compared to a professor if we compare the selection of dates that we see here to yours. Yes, there are a lot here. Yes, yes. This is a fresh one, isn't it? Yes, just five days ago they were plucked from palm trees. Meaning they were picked from a palm tree and now I'm going to try a fresh date. Even I haven't tried them yet. Let's try them. You mean you've been living here and you haven't tried fresh dates? Turns out they crunch. It coats your mouth. Yeah, it does. You know, it's sort of similar to a persimmon, my friends. If it's not the first time that you've seen a fresh date, but you've never tried one. I don't know whether anyone in Russia has even seen what a fresh date looks like. And now a new question is bugging me. Why is that no one ever seems to sell fresh dates? For some reason, they're always dry. Why dry them when they're so tasty fresh? And juicy, that's the main thing. I don't know. Two pounds of the most delicious dates in the world cost 15 dirhams, which is 375. Well? Fantastic. And that's not all. It's not for nothing that this place is called the Waterfront Market. It's near the water, and that means lots and lots of fish. So welcome to our fish section. Look, I must say that this is the cleanest and largest fish section of a market I've seen, and I've seen quite a lot of them. Oh. Oh, a joker. Oh. All right, I'm scared. Okay, scary. No, well, actually, yes, actually, yes. Well, well, on the rope. Ah. Look, it's alive and on the rope. Well, well, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, on the rope, on the rope. It behaves much more aggressively than the Far Eastern shrimp, if you remember what I'm talking about. But there's a reason for it. The sea is hot here, and its inhabitants are hot-tempered too. Thank you. Is it tasty? The most delicious crab in the market. What is it called? Black crab. Black crab. And where is it from? From Pakistan. Pakistan. What do you say? Not very impressive, judging by the reaction of the young man. What can I tell you? Wow. 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 What an assortment. Now this is a real fish market. There's no lack of choices here. This kind of fish, that kind of fish, fish from different seas, it's all fresh. Half of it is alive and moving. So, Alexander, do you see that fish, the big fish? This is, in yes. fact, considered to be the symbol of Dubai because it is a local fish. Everyone really loves it and says it's delicious, so I recommend it. So shall we buy it? Well, you know, there's an auction here, so it's better to buy one there. This, this auction is very well known. And in fact, I really recommend you go there and see everything with your own eyes. Now I'll say the word that makes my mouth water and makes the mouths of even the most sophisticated foodies water. Lobster. Here is the freshest lobster. Yeah, look at it. And this is his, well... And this is his friend. What do you mean by a friend? Okay, or a girlfriend. A grandson. Grandson. Girlfriend? We'll see. Well, tastes differ. So where's this lobster from? From Canada. And this one? From Oman. Canada and Oman? So a big country has a small lobster, and a small country has a big lobster. How much do they cost? This one is 75 dirhams. This one is 65 dirhams. 65. So this one is cheaper? Yes. It's bigger, but cheaper? Very strange. Well, this one has more meat. Here's the meat here. And this one has meat only here. So here we only eat this part? Yes, but here we eat almost everything. 
And how much do you think it weighs? Less than two pounds, about a pound and a half. So we could say that in Dubai, even students can afford lobster, right? Well, yes, I guess, yes. Very beautiful, very beautiful and very tasty. A Canadian lobster costs 75 dirhams or $18.75 for two pounds. An Oman lobster costs 65 dirhams or $16.25 for two pounds. Well, let's find out what this amour is like. I'm sure you're sitting there wondering, what's with my face? I always have this expression, my friends, if I overpay. When I was going to the auction, I thought if nothing else, I really know how to haggle. I've learned how from the best masters in the most famous markets in the world. Well, what happened in the end? As far as you remember, I paid 110 dirhams for this fish, and then well-informed people told me that in fact this fish cost 40, 40 dirhams, guys. That is, I overpaid by almost three times. Well, what do you want? The seller at the auction, who has probably been working there since birth, unmistakably identified me as a new arrival to Dubai, who probably isn't aware of the prices here. And he was absolutely right. And of course, he didn't let the opportunity to take advantage of me pass by. Forget about him. Oh, especially since the fish is amazing and cooked properly. Moreover, it was caught only two hours ago. And if you only knew how much positivity and energy I got from being at the auction. However unsuccessful I was and from participating in it, I continue to believe that nothing is worth as much as emotions. So I still count myself lucky.